Hi, and welcome to WinU. I'm Megan Willis. I'm going to be your guys' host today. Uh, and really, today is all about getting to know me, getting to know my background, and then opening up the field of questions uh, if you guys have any. So, you know, I'm going to start with just how I got started with the game of softball. Uh, I was nine years old. I had just moved down to Arizona from Gillette, Wyoming, and I'm going to let you know Gillette, Wyoming, back in the early 90s, there was not fast pitch softball at all. I knew nothing about it. I had played soccer, I had played basketball, uh, you know, was in gymnastics. But anyways, family, we moved down to Arizona, and for whatever reason, my parents decided to put me into the last two weeks of school. This is my third grade class. Actually, I think it was second grade. And because of that, I met a girl named Lisa Jones right from the get-go, and her dad had a softball organization called the Hot Shots, the Arizona Hot Shots. And actually, the AZ Hot Shots are still an organization around in, uh, in the Phoenix area, so that's kind of pretty cool. But anyways, so she was one of four. She was the youngest, and they had a 10 and under team. And because we had met uh, just in two weeks, she asked if I'd go play on their team. And again, I had never played. I'd maybe played catch with my dad, just baseball, um, you know, just playing catch in the backyard, whatever. I guess I used to go to his old slow pitch games. I don't remember a whole lot about that. But anyways, I got in, uh, into fast pitch softball that summer, 10U, and just really never looked back. I think the other thing that I remember during that time too is I went to my very first fast pitch softball game, which was an ASU softball game. And again, I remember walking by uh, the bullpen, and I was like, Lisa, did you just see that? Uh, that why'd she just throw that underhand? And Lisa was like, well, Megan, because this is fast pitch. This is how the pitchers throw. So again, I knew nothing about it. I'm nine years old, and uh, that was the first time I got introduced to the game. And really, I just jumped right into the gl club sports scene and never looked back. Uh, after that, I think I obviously realized I loved it. At the time, I tried pitching. I was catching, played shortstop, first base, all of the above. But really, it was catching that really I fell in love with. And to be quite honest with you, uh, between my dad and I sitting down and figuring out once I realized I was really good at softball, or at least we felt we were good enough, uh, the next step was how we were going to start setting some goals. Uh, I was in high school. As a freshman, I made the varsity team. And I think that's kind of when we knew we needed to start setting goals such as getting a collegiate scholarship. And when we started talking about that, it was like, okay, well, who gets the full ride scholarships? And it was pitchers and catchers. Well, I knew just with my personality, uh, I wasn't going to go out every single day and pitch. And it was hard. And I could pitch. And I'd say I was pretty medi mediocre at it. Uh, I played up until I was 16 or pitched up until I was 16. However, uh, I knew that I felt that catching was really going to be uh, my way to go. So. We really worked in the catching, and um, I want to say like the rest is history, but he and I really worked on throwdowns and how hard I could get it down to second. I started adding and throwing from my knees, which was not uh, really heard of at the time, and that was strictly just because Dad was watching MLB, and we were watching the MLB uh, catchers, and we're like, man, how do you think we can get faster? They were throwing from their knees, so we figured out uh, how I could get it done, and I'd have to say... I might be, there's no fact checkers out there, but I'm pretty sure I'm the first catcher, at least collegiately, that got out there that made throwing from their knees um, a thing, right? And we're able to do it, and I started teaching other girls how to do it. My other teammates, we all started doing it, and really now, almost every catcher out there has the ability to throw from their knees. Uh, and that kind of segues into, again, I think, just how to, get noticed by colleges, right? I think uh, it always comes down to you and your conversations with your family, how you guys uh, want to set those goals. Do they have to be realistic goals, um, smart goals? And so there is no right or wrong answer, right? It's only what you want to do. Do you want to go away for college? Do you want to stay at home? Do you want to go and live in the north? Do you want to live in the south? Personally, for me, I started making a very uh, detailed goal sheet that included 
uh, where I wanted to live. I personally can't stand the cold. And being a catcher, I did not want to catch in the cold. So everything, pretty much northern school, even if they were a Pac-10, they were Big 10, Big 12, <laughs> I just, I knew right away that that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to stay south. I lived in Arizona. I have no problem playing in 120 degrees, which meant like I could go to Texas. I could go to Florida, um, Arizona. All these places were definitely open to me. But again, it starts with setting those goals for yourself, being realistic about your wants and what you want um, out of your college career. And then after that, it's about getting yourself on a team where you're going to be able to play, right? You want to make sure that you're on a team, that people can see you, that uh, you are actually playing, and that you're on a competitive team that coaches can also see you as well. Uh, as a reminder, as I keep talking, if you guys have any questions, start sending them in. But I'm just going to keep talking and giving you guys a little bit more insight about about my uh, profession in softball, about how I've been able to continue to not only just play, but keep it just in my, I feel like here I am at 36, right? And we're still talking about softball as a career uh, for me as well. So um, let's go some important lessons that I've learned with this game of softball. I think first and foremost, time management. Uh, Softball or sport in general has taught me how to really plan out my day, my week, my month, and you're going to hear this throughout this entire segment, and it's talking about goals, and it's talking about planning, right? And because of softball, I think that you're always constantly working backwards from an ultimate goal, whether that was in college, a national championship, whether that is in club ball, and that, which is also a national championship, Maybe it's just weekly tournaments, right? You're always going into a tournament. I would have to imagine you're always going in wanting to win, right? So then you start setting it backwards. And then even smaller goals is your weekly goal. How are you going to plan making sure you're getting to your team practices? How you're planning your time management? How you're going to get to maybe your um, personal lessons? How often are you going to go out and work on your own? How often are you going to go in the backyard uh, and hit? Are you going to have a tee in your backyard? Do you have to go to a high school or any you know, local field to go play? Do you have to manage getting a friend or a teammate to go practice with? Do you have to work around your parents' work schedule so that one of them can come with you? Uh, what's really great about this is, specifically because we're sitting here in Wynn softball field, when can you make time to put on your Oculus and go out and get some vision training, right? When can you do that? Even if it's 10 or 15 minutes, start working in a plan. Start working in how you can maybe do that when you wake up, when you get home from school. When do you have an extra 10 to 15 minutes? And so, again, a long-winded answer, but I'd say time management is one of the most important things that uh, I've learned from playing softball or just sport in general. Uh, what advice would I give younger Megan? Well, it's really fun to go back and think. I think for the most part, I, um, I did a really good job managing my time and still having a lot of fun throughout the years. I know sometimes I hear you know, professional athletes go back and be like, man, I wish I was able to do a little bit more. Um, but for myself, I feel like I almost needed to take sport or practice a little bit more serious. And so when I say that now, and I think what I've already accomplished, getting that full ride scholarship to the University of Texas, being able to play professionally up until I was 30, I went over and played in Japan for two years. I was definitely at the top of my game and definitely at the top of my position, but I do wish that I could go back and see what I could have done a little bit more uh, specifically hitting wise. How could I have practiced more? How could I have trained a little bit more? How would I have been able to understand the swing more? Uh, and sometimes I say that, and I don't know that we have or had the technology that we have now, which is kind of interesting, right? I wish I could take all the technology that this world has created, uh, including something like WIN, right? That we can go out and work on, but no one even talked about Oculus training uh, when I was nine to 16 years old and barely even in college at the time did we even have 
uh, tape to go back and look at. We were looking at VHS tapes and we were looking at old, you know, recorders that had all the wires and you're having to, you know, rewind and push play and pause. You're not being able to zoom in and now you can go back and watch everything so many, uh, so many times. You can clip off your favorite ABs. You can clip off, um, you know, when maybe you struck out what you needed to change. But anyways, I wish I could take more so the technology we have now, go back to my younger days and just use that to practice a little bit more and then it would be fun to see what I could have accomplished. Uh, good question. All right, uh, so as I mentioned, I did play professionally. I was drafted in 2007, which was my senior year in college. I was drafted to the Chicago Bandits and truly at the time, I really didn't even know there was a professional softball league and that just goes to show you how much it's grown since 2007. Uh, now, uh, a days, or at least a couple years ago, pre-COVID, there was a draft, it was televised, and people were really excited. There's been a lot of momentum. But in 2007, it was really just a draft amongst seven teams, and then you got an email, or they called your college coach, and then they let you know. But still exciting nonetheless. I went and played for Chicago Bandits, and... Um, what was really great about that year is, so I played with Kat Osterman at the University of Texas for two years. Her and I and our team went to the World Series. I went twice, she went three times. Again, she's a couple years older than me. But um, in 2007, she played for the Rockford Thunder. So this was the first time her and I played against each other. Kind of ironic, uh, on the Chicago Bandits team, Ginny Finch was the pitcher. So Jenny Finch, who formerly played at the University of Arizona, uh, I was catching for on the Chicago Bandits, and then Kat was at the Rockford Thunder, and her catcher at the time was Mackenzie Vandergeest, who was Jenny Finch's catcher at Arizona. So that was a pretty rad summer. We got to play against each other. I like to always remind Kat uh, of the time, the very first AB, she hit me. It's kind of bush league, I thought. She's trying to go up and in with a rise ball, and she got me on my hand. I was okay though, and then I'm sure the next couple times she struck me out, but whatever. I still like to say I got on the first time I faced her. Uh, and luckily though, after that, um, I got traded basically to UAAA Pride, and that's where Kat went as well, and her and I were teammates the entire uh, rest of my professional career through 2015. So it was an incredible ride. Together when we got, oh, I can't believe I forgot this. Before USSA Pride, it was 2009, her and I got traded, or I just got traded to the Rockford Thunder. And so her and I won a championship together in 2009, and then 2010 we got traded to the Pride, and we won another two championships. So all together three, which made up for the fact that while in college we came up short, we only got third place at the World Series. We could never get past the pesky UCLA Bruins. Um, but we made up for it when we got to the MPF and it was incredible. And really, I, I like to talk about the MPF so much because the different players that you get to play with and because I had the opportunity to play seven, eight years in the MPF, I got to play with uh, players that were a few years older than me when I was younger. Uh, I got to catch for someone like Ginny Finch and I got to play against uh, just all of these great, these great players that maybe I didn't get to do in college. And then let's fast forward to my last year, 2015. I was getting to play with Lauren Chamberlain, who I was commentating, um, commentating on for the most part as a professional, right? When she's at OU, uh, I was commentating on ESPN and the Longhorn Network. And so you know of all these great younger athletes and finally you get to play with them. So I got to play with the likes of a Lauren Chamberlain. I got to catch Danielle Laurie. I got to go out and play with Ashley Charters. And then on the flip side, I was still playing with Caitlin Lowe, who was an Olympian uh, in, the, in 2008. And of course, Kat was too. Um, on that 2010 USSA team, I got to play with about six or seven Olympians. So I'll, I'm gonna name some names and most of you guys are gonna know these people, but it's like uh, Jessica Mendoza, she was on the team, Natasha Watley, Andrea Duran, Ashley Charters, Lauren Lappin, uh, Kelly Crutchman, one of the greatest hitters of all time, 
became my teammate, and uh, I just never thought that I would get to continue to learn well past my college playing days, and it was because I got to play with all of these great athletes all at the same time. Uh, okay, last question. What was it like playing overseas professionally. So earlier I mentioned I got to go over and play professionally in Japan. I played for two seasons. Uh, incredible, incredible experience. So when you go over to Japan, uh, there's only two foreigners allowed per team at, at the time when I was there. And my first year I went over with Kat. Kat and I went over. And then my second year I went over with Danielle Laurie. And I'll tell you what, the way that they practice over there is just it's so long, it's so intense. Um, the way that they're able to do it is they're all company teams. So all of my teammates, all of my Japanese teammates, they would go to work in the morning, uh, probably from about 8 till 11, 11.30. They would come out to the softball field, they'd have a quick 30 minute lunch, and then that's when me and Kat or me and Danielle would go meet up with the team and we would practice from one till 6 p.m. at night, sometimes 7 p.m. at night. And it was just so intense for us, right? Because we had already gone through college. We've already been in the professional ranks. So at this time, we're not practicing six hours a day. Even in college, for the max part, you're practicing three hours a day. So that was a huge adjustment, learning how to stay on your feet, stay in your cleats for that long. But so much respect uh, the Japanese uh, had for the game. I watched them after every practice. We all, it wasn't just them, we would be a part of this too. We'd clean every single ball that we used at practice. We'd put them back in their crate the exact same way every time because if you did it that way, you'd know if you were missing a softball and then we'd have to go find that. We'd drag the field ourselves before and after every practice. Uh, and everything you would do at the end, you would say pretty much like a, a thank you before we practice and a thank you after practice. And that was just, again, the respect for the game that was so incredible to get to learn. Um, and then also, I think the biggest thing I took from that is I got to face uh, Wayno. And Wayno was the 2008 uh, Olympian that, for the Japanese team, she was the pitcher that beat USA. So it was pretty cool to say that you got to face Wayno. Uh, and I actually, hit a home run off away now. So that was another thing I got to pat myself on the back for. I, uh, so I think what this sport has given me, what this sport has taught me, um, the different places I've been has been incredible, the different countries I've been to. Uh, but going and playing in Japan, it was hard. At the first, I'd say the first month was incredibly hard because you don't speak the same language and you can't even try to understand what they're telling you. They'd give you a translator and they would, uh, I would go to Japanese classes twice a week, but it wasn't until about a month later that I could truly start to understand my teammates' voices or at least differentiate between my first baseman yelling for the ball or my third baseman yelling for a ball. Uh, but after I was able to get through that point, uh, it is something that I would love to do again. I know for a fact I'm going to travel back over to Japan because I love Tokyo so much, uh, but something that I truly cherish. Okay, just one last call. Any other questions? Well, that's going to be it for uh, today's When You. I'm going to be here throughout the next weeks helping you guys and kind of co hosting this show. I'm excited to be a part of Win Reality. I'm excited to add more uh, in depth features with softball. As we all know, uh, softball is the greatest sport in the world. So thank you guys for having me, and we'll see you next week. Oh, yeah.